All right, folks, working on the Chevrolet GMC here, I guess it would be, Sierra. It's got the big 5.3. It's got a broken exhaust manifold bolt. And evidently, it's ticking on the guy in the morning. He saw the front bolts missing. It's all black around the manifold, so we're gonna get after it. This is probably a repeat video. I didn't look, but I'm sure we've done videos on these before. However, I don't recall showing one on one of these, this body. I don't think we've done this body style. Yeah, I'm not sure. We're gonna pull all the screws out of the fender liner. Gotta find them all. A little bit of mud here. Get something to dig that one out. I think that's most of them. Okay, oh, yeah, one more right here in the back. All right, let's see. Mud flats probably gotta go, yeah, it's aftermarket. There's that, yep, and there's some more screws or at least another one. Probably these here, I'm guessing. Feels like they're hanging on. If they want to be friendly. See if I can do it without breaking all the clips. That's as far as we should have to go. Come on, baby. Forget one? I don't think so. Maybe. Let me dig around here in the mud. I might have forgot a screw. Yes, sir, we did. Take out the last screw. It should be good. There. Go set this somewhere. Pretty waterlogged. with one of them clips we can get it back off. Now we can kind of see what we need to see. Truck's pretty messy. So here's what we're looking at. There's the, the front bolt there on the manifold. Hopefully you guys can I can't see what you're seeing but uh, you can see it's broken. Got some black soot around there. Leaking a little bit around that. So there's three two. At least the rear one's not broke. They're kind of a piss here to get to. Um, Let's see, I think we got a pop. I don't know if we got a pop steering shaft loose. Probably may as well. We're right here. At least give us a little more room. I, I'm hoping you guys can see what we need to see. I'll do my best for you. No guarantees, like always. All right, let's throw the ugly duggy gun right on the steering shaft here. 15 mil. Careful about sticking your finger on the back side of it, though. It should get you. It's got a flag nut on it. Get our impact up in here without extension. 
So if you're sticking your hand back there, well now that you can't see, just be careful because if this is a little bit stuck, this flag nut will come around and it'll let you know. It'll give you a little what's up on the end of your finger. Just so you guys know, be careful. Safety third as always. And to address the fact that this customer is a complete scumbag for bringing their truck in dirty. Uh, we got six inches of snow yesterday. I brought the truck inside because everything was frozen. So that's why he didn't wash it. So before you guys go bananas about that, why didn't I wash it? I don't know, I'm not a car wash. <laughs> not my problem. So let's see, we should be able to work that intermediate shaft up in there, right? That should collapse up into the column, I'm thinking. It's probably stuck here a little. Let me go get an air hammer. Pull that harness down out of your way. We'll spray it with a little bit of the WD, just in case there's any water in it. <laughs> I'm such a jerk. Okay, let's rattle on this a little, see if it vibrates it loose. Let's see if I can get my other hand up in here and give her a little push as we rattle. Boy, look at that WD-40 working, doing its job, huh? I spoke too soon. Can't really get a good spot on this thing. Way to go, WD. I'm gonna have to vibrate that sucker back down too. Yeah, we don't wanna go too far, do we? give us our clearance we're going to need. Oh, she does a little stuff there. So make sure your steering wheel is not going to spin a 360 on you. And now that's going to give us our little clearance here where it comes out into the steering rack. Okay. And then, boy, this is a terrible video to try to record. We're going to yank off our plug wires and do all four of those. I can't move the camera for you because I got you in about the most optimal viewing position. Let's see if we can set the light somewhere so though, where you can kind of see. Set so it right there. How's that for you? It's still a little dark, but you get the picture. There's a gist. Not maybe not the picture. Of these plug wires that spin. Then you gotta do the old pull and pray method. Let me go get a pair of plug wires, pullers. So spin them to get them cracked loose and then we'll try to grab them down here the best we can. Oh, there's one. And it didn't break off, so that's a plus. Set that to the side. See if I can spin any of these other ones. Nice we cut these brake lines right out of the way, huh? Okay, there we go, that one just cracks. And then, usually at that point, you can pull them off. Just like so, but if you don't spin it and get it to break loose, then you're in trouble. Can't really get my fingers on that. We'll see if we can't spin it with these little guys. Check them out here. See if we can give her a 360. There we go, I think. Come on, baby. There's number three. All right, 
Eric Diaz. We don't have to buy plug wires. Or he doesn't have to buy plug wires. Maybe if I can find it. There it is. And here is my number one. What's up, Mr. Bell? The guy with the van. With the van. The black van out there? The white van. Yes. Parts are ordered. And they're supposed to be here from Buffalo this morning, but they're not, so I'm assuming they're coming midday. You have to call Panther. What we're going to do, we have more crap to take off, but we're going to try to get just a couple of the bolts out first. Now these are locked taut right from the factory, so I find it is best to just come in there and give it a little bit of heat. I know it seems counterintuitive to what you might think, but it'll at least crack that lock tight loose for us. Better put a different head on my torch and we'll get in there. Now the aluminium will pull that heat away very quickly. But usually it's enough to get the job done. Let's see if we can't crack this one. loose but we need a different socket. Need to get a little bit of angle on that thing. Let me get a different socket folks. I did feel it crack loose so we're gonna go in with the Ugga Dugga. There we go. There's one. So that's not too bad. There's one bolt. Oh I don't see Loctite on this. Maybe they quit using it. Maybe it's been played with. We're not going to bypass our procedure. Come on. There we go. Get this little guy. Can't get out in there. Oh man, he's taking too much time. Push, 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 push. There, mm -hmm. oh, oh, baby, yeah. I like that. I like it a lot. There we go. There's two. So now what has to happen, the stinking oil dipstick, we need the cracker loose. I hope that will come out of the block. These typically they don't like to because they're usually rotted right in there. Of course, this one's all aluminium. Let me go eat some lunch and ponder about this. We have to see if we can't get to the screw that holds the little dipstick on here. I'll take some of this stuff off. I'm be so tired after lunch, I can hardly work. Come on, baby. Get off there. There we go. There we go. Get this thing off. On the old creaky stool. Oh, come on, man. Come on, man. Get off there. so we don't drop too much down the hole. What do we need? Torx bit. Let me go get one. Can't reach that little fella down there. Come on. Come on, man. There we go. So there's that. Little screw that holds a dipstick in. Sit there, right there. Like I say, I doubt it'll come out of the block. I could be wrong, but we at least got it where we can tweak it out of our way. It's not how I want to do it, but I did not buy a new tube. Which usually you gotta get a little violent with these things, but let's do uh, do the best we can, folks. Let's just see here. See if today's our lucky day. Let's stick my arms right smack him. Oh, you know what? 
Oh, this tube's moving, baby. Hey, the movie, I'll let you share the wiring harness here for a little bit. We're gonna run some WD right down that tube. Hopefully, it'll help us get that O-ring a little bit loose. I know you guys can't see much, but you have to just bear with me. Or maybe I'll omit this part. Oh, look at that. I must be living right, baby. I'll tell you that. Look at that. Boy, you have a look at that filly. She came right out. I'll be. I'll be. We got it. So look at that. All right, we're doing good. Now, if I keep you guys right where you're at, we come right in here. You guys see where we're at? You're just looking at a wiring harness. You're just looking at a wiring harness. Let's see if I can move you again. I'll take this the wrong way, folks. Some days you're a little bit annoying. <laughs> Take it how you want. Um, I try to show you the best I can. But some days it's hard to get you where you gotta be. And where I gotta be. So I try to put you where you can almost see. And I can see a little bit myself. Let's see what we have. And here we go. What are you doing? Oh, we're making a video, Andy. Fixing the manifold and shoot me. Where's the manifold? Oh, no, camera's right over here, man. Look at this. Whoa! I just telling people how annoying they are. <laughs> <laughs> now we all know. Yeah. No, no, you know, I know. What? <laughs> um, no, just with the camera work. Oh, if yeah. If you start your own YouTube channel, I'm, you can discover that yourself. Really? Yeah. I'm trying to get the people where they can see and I can see, we can all see. Wow. How in the thunder do you suppose to get to that back bolt? This looks tight. Looks like a job for the torch. Oh, Vic, no Vic. Oh, Vic. Get him out. <laughs> Put him up. I'm thinking, I'm thinking we're gonna have to pull the heat shield off here. I wonder how that's gonna go. We'll find out. Stand by. Oh. All right, Andy just had to come borrow some tools. Let's see here if we can't get this heat shield off. I don't recall working on one of these. That way ain't going. We did grab a 10 millimeter, right? Yes, sir. We'll give that one a little whack, see what happens. Might have to grab a 3 8 It might be a little rusted. Oh, that one's not rusted. Let's try this little guy up here. We need a longer extension, man. Oh, easy, fella. We'll use this big long guy right here. Can't get up on that one. Wow. Today's our lucky day. Them rusted bolts came out. So that's good. Plus, the dipstick came out, which is great. Easy. Hey, we better not press our luck anymore. There's that one. Now, go back on this bottom one. Let's see. I don't know if you guys can even see that one. Yeah, that one ain't nothing there. Let's, uh, we're gonna have to grab something different. It's 3 8 a little bit. And then, ooh, maybe. It'll either come out or it'll make it worse. Just to hoping it doesn't make it worse. 3 8 is a little smaller than a 10. Let's see. Oh, man. Look at that. Take that off, hopefully, you know. That gives us enough room. Sorry, I needed to bump you. Now we got the room. I might have to bump you a little bit more here, folks. 
Not for personal. Just want to set it up there. Okay. Now, let's see if we. I can't think of anything else that rhymes. Can be frisky. No, we don't want to be frisky. Not with a bunch of dudes. Here we go. Okay, so we can get on that one. However, are we going to unhook it from the manifold? Or are we just going to pull this baby back, slide new gasket in it, get the broken bolt out? Let's unhook it from the manifold and be wise about this. They look like 15. Let's go assess the situation. Usually, these need heated. So let's see if we can even get on them. Extension, a little too short, but a little short today. Let's <laughs> get a longer one. I'm going for this one that we can reach. Let's see if we can do it without heat. Probably not. Well, I tell you what. One down. Two down. You get this one to drop all across the floor here. There's that one. Ooh, numero 3 -0 is way up there. Long extension for that. All right, here we go. We're going in deep, boys. There it is. It might cut down our power too much. Perfect. Fell right in my lamp, too. Wow. And then, and then we're going to come in to our last uh, manifold stud here. Well, we're on a roll. Let's just try this one with no heat. Let's just see what it feels like. Let's just get a little feel. Mm, I don't like it. I don't feel like drilling that one out or welding anything to it. So let's use our head here for more than a coat rack, hat rack. I guess that's what my teacher used to tell me. Heating them works so well because, as you probably already read in the comments, it's, it's counterintuitive. It, you know, theoretically, should heat up the bolt, making it tighter in the hole, which I agree with. However, it works, and I believe it's because they have Loctite on them. They typically do. Oh, too much talking. And then it breaks that bond, perhaps breaks a rust bond that it may have. Yeah, see, I mean, I'm barely pushing on it now. Boom. I don't know. I don't like it. It feels funny. But we got a quite a steep angle we're going on here, too. So we're going to get this one handy all the way to the end. Because I can't fit my impact in here. All right, I'm going to pull out. There we go. Because... You're about to learn a hard lesson here, folks. You keep just getting after it right there. What's gonna happen? The manifold's gonna fall down and you're gonna break a spark plug. So, what do you do? Stick a bolt back in the middle. Just kind of hold it, okay? Back in here, hopefully. Get up in there. Oh man! Set that down. Where we at? All right. Not 
the most graceful way, but it worked. Get out of there, get your socks in the back. These in here, feel for your bolt. Get your bolt back. Now you gotta move again. You gotta go back over where you can't see because I gotta work right here in the middle. Hang on to your manifold. Ta-da! Now, take your bolt, put it in your pan. Slide this up like that. Get your gasket. Pull that little guy out of there, that's what that looks like. Alright. Now, see if we can't just set this up on top of the engine. And down here. Maybe we can. Hopefully we're not hitting anything positive. We're gonna set that right up on top of the engine. Boom. Okay. Now we're down to the meat and the potatoes. People are gonna ask me why I don't take the spark plugs out if it's a risk breaking them. Because I'd rather break one and have it plug the hole than sit here filling the hole full of stuff. Now we got us a quarter inch twist socket. This is a little fella. Okay, this is a size of this baby. 8.25 mm. Mr. Twister, I call it. Kind of like Twisted Sister. But let's see if we can. Hopefully it's got enough grip. This bolt shouldn't be very tight. I could be wrong though. Yeah, she's pretty snug. Let's, because we have a good grip on it, do the same process here. Oh, hit the lever. Hit the knob. I go next size smaller. Drop down to an eight mil, which would make a little more sense because it's an eight millimeter stud. We're not quite straight though. Let's see if this works. Can't tell what's going on in there. Come on, talk to me. We've turned too much to be stripping on the outside. I'm not worried about it stripping out the hole. I'm just about the socket biting here. I think we're rolling. Oh, we're doing it now, folks. We're in the home to get some, get some power. Chicken dinner. We got it. Woohoo! I'm out of breath. <laughs> Coming up in there with a bristle. You may have to move because I think you're only going to see my elbow. I cleaned off the manifold and the sandblaster, so I'm just going to stick it back, you know, right up here so we can slip her down in and keep all the other stuff here. But just so you know, in case we have some trust issues. Can't manipulate this around a little bit. Got her just sitting down in here. Gotta try to do this with you folks right in the way. Of course, I can't see what you can see right now, which might not be much. <laughs> might not be benefiting anybody here. Um, okay, slip that there. Let's get a bolt in it so we can hold it where we need it. Let's see. 
Hey, it's that guy. Get this one in because. We just need one to hold it still. Hold still, little fella. Okay. Let's see if I can't reach through here. Let's put this one in. There's that one. Okay, let's get one more in there. <laughs> oh, fiddly dee. -dee. <laughs> that is going to require a tetanus shot. <laughs> What, what kind of problem you got? Well, the holes ain't lining up. Oh, We're gonna have no. a look at something. Here. Dormant parts. No, fell for it. Made oh, in America. Same thing, only different. A little bit. See, Andy, we'll stop down sometime. Oh, maybe. Maybe I'll be around. All right, folks, so the difference is when you put it on the Felpro, you don't put the uh, Felpro side out with the Made in America. You put the Made in America side up against the head, it is slightly offset. Now, I typically, this is my first time using aftermarket multi-layer steel gaskets on these. I generally use OEM, and the OEM says right on it, manifold side. However, I don't know if we're going to say anything on it, but it did, well, I can look, see if it came with any paperwork. I mean, look, you stand by, what's it say? Let's see if we can't get this little guy fed right up in there with a quarter inch. Come on, tip in the hole. Hopefully we come straight enough to get it started. Gotta be gentle with it here. I got a little, little piece of hanky around that because that's what holds the bolt in the socket. Now we'll just go through and very lightly snug them. on this one are going to be pretty quiet so you'll have to uh, really pay attention if you want to hear them. This body style is definitely more difficult to do than the older ones, albeit not very difficult. The older shivvies though, we've been done on both sides by now. <laughs> the other side on this one is not leaking, however. And the customer just requested that we remove the broken bolt on this side, so this is all we're doing. Hold on, I'm gonna have to kind of right, oh, you're kind of right in the way. Let's see if we can't get up on there. There we go. Let's go back through and double check them here. Make sure they're factory spec. Most people didn't even know you could torque with a swivel on there like that, did you? Oh, oh man, that sounded terrible, didn't? Don't worry, I didn't break. It's just where I slipped here. There we go. Okay. See if we can get this slippery little sucker back down where she belongs. We're around town. Got the end of it cleaned up and re-lubed. Now we gotta play the poke and hope game. So close I can feel it. Boy, it's super inconvenient though. You guys can see that tube in the mirror that she's sitting down in there flush now. I get it in a better spot for you or not? Uh, well, can't really. 
but trust me, it's down in there all the way. You are able, if you're struggling with this thing, and it didn't take much. I took a long screwdriver and you can set it right next to the manifold here. You can follow the tube right down and it will just touch the flange on the uh, dipstick tube. And I just barely gave it a push with a screwdriver and that's all it needed. You, you can just get better purchase from right there. It slipped right in. So now it's sitting flush with the uh, valve cover. We put the bolt back in it. Prior to doing that though, we can and we will bring down the heat shield. Because that's not going to hinder us from anything. And before we get a million comments about the number of cracks in this head and how the head's cracked and all the time stamps, trust me folks, the head is not cracked, okay? You're cracked, my guy. It's not cracked. Those are just casting marks. Let's figure it out. So, so the comment section down there a little bit. Everybody always sees a crack. <laughs> the other day I did a video, that follow-up video on changing that fuel pump. My goodness, the number of comments saying that my air compressor is full of water. Dude, we were blowing water and mud from the top of the tank. Literally in the previous video, I sprayed the top of the tank with soapy water <laughs> or soapy water, as you see on YouTube. So that's why that looked like it was water coming out of my airline, I guess. I was kind of surprised to see the number of, you need to drain your air compressor bro comments. That's all right. Gives us something to talk about. We'll slip all of our wires back on. There is dielectric grease in the end of them. Help them slip on a little easier. Plus it also helps insulate the spark from shooting out. forget we have to do a little fishing let me look down around here <laughs> we dropped them bolts and uh, I'm not sure where they went just having a look see let me get the fishing magnet see if we can find them thank you I see it where we I just saw you don't read down one fell to this good plate and the other one is right there boom we got both our bolts recovered stick that over here there, now we got all that. Let's put the bolt back in the dipstick, which is right here. Not real good with the camera today, I don't think. I don't know what the solution is for recording these jobs where it's super tight. Now where you can see and I can see everybody's happy. I don't think it's the advantage to wear like a you know thing on my head, you know, like a GoPro. Because sometimes the view from my advantage almost has to be directly in front of my eyeballs. And I tried out this camera deal where I wore it like glasses and it's just the quality from it just wasn't quite there enough. I I don't think in my opinion. Plus, you weren't really looking at what I was looking at because the camera was just, you know, like offset to the side where the frames of the glasses are, where they go around your ears. Get back in there. What a stupid is that? Gosh. That pathetic. You gotta put all this stuff on here so you can't hear your motor knocking all the time. Content. Sounds 
good for my house. I think we'll leave it at that, folks. I think you get the gist from what we did, pretty much. Not much to see, really. All we did is take out one broken bolt, which wasn't recessed, so it's not difficult to do. Um, difficult to record, so hopefully there's some benefit of this video that you guys can have some kind of takeaway. I don't know what it is, but you'll let me know in the comment section. I'm sure. And there's not much more else I can say. Yeah, don't. Don't get on this guy too much about not washing it. Like I say, everything was frozen yesterday when he dropped it off, so I left it and tied the thaw out. So it is what it is, and I don't have time to wash every car I work on, so. You know, if I was doing some major project, maybe, but not like we're laying over it, scratching it all up or anything. Whatever, um, eats your own, I suppose. Why don't you go be your own down in that comment section, questions. Try not to spit on you. Comments, Insta, Facebook. You guys want to do it. Just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.